What is up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Today, we're taking a look at the Aether War Box by Games Workshop for the Age of Sigmar game. And I've broken down the pricing because it's really interesting. I saw that the sticker price for this was a hundred eighty five dollars for the whole thing and then i decided to take the different models in the box and break down the prices individually so to see what comes in the box let's break it down right now you've got two factions first the disciples of zinch the total of these models would come out retail price if you purchased it off of games workshop to 183 dollars american that's three zangor enlightened which can also make sky fires so you get six of those the box suggests that you build three of them as enlightened and three of them as sky fires both of those boxes cost 55 dollars individually so you got two of those you have a unit of three screamers of zinch which comes in at 35 dollars and then one magister on flying disc when this was released in january 2020 this was the only way to get the magister on flying disc and then they released it separately so now you can purchase it for 38 dollars and the carriage run overlords are clocking in at 193 so for those you get one grunstock gun hauler which is the flying transport that comes in at 55 dollars and then uh, same thing with the sky wardens and the engine riggers as the enlightened and sky fires it's a dual kit so you can build one big unit of six or three and three and those boxes cost fifty dollars each so you're getting that two times and finally you get one endrin master with the dirigible suit which is like i said another special character or not special character but uh an individual character that was not released separately the only way you could get it was through this box at the time so he's coming in now at 38 dollars that means that if you purchased everything separately on the Games Workshop website, you would be paying $376. So you're getting a pretty big savings since the Aether War came in at $185. You are saving $191. So, I mean, if you're interested in either of those two factions, the whole gimmick of this box is that uh, it allows you to start collecting mainly flying units this is supposed to take place in the clouds so you've got the caradron overlords with their flying guys as well as the zinch guys on the discs and uh, yeah let's take a look we're not going to really dive into the sprues of all of the models i'm going to do separate videos if you're interested on any of those we're just really taking a look at the box as a whole i broke down the pricing so we'll uh, take the sprues out and then we'll go over what they look like as well as the books the bases the cards and the war scrolls and all of that so i mean it's really cool that in this box i've seen a couple of games workshop products doing this now they have a separator that keeps the sprues away from the books and i think that's great because you know if something happens and the sprues get pressed up against the books they could uh, leave some marks or even puncture tear through them and on the back of that you get this cool little artwork so pretty cool and if you want to frame that or just stick it up like a poster on your wall you get a free poster in the book uh, in the box that's pretty cool and all right so you sprues in the front little divider you get your packet of books your bases here at the bottom and uh, all the different cards different base sizes and uh it could be confusing especially if you're a new collector or a new painter you don't have much experience collecting these miniatures and uh, th the guide for assembling these miniatures is uh, really good at being able to show you what base goes with which model okay so let's take a look really quickly just doing a quick overview this is the endrin master he comes on his own sprue so he's not going to get lost like uh, in the old Dark Vengeance and starter sets, you could have your characters mixed up with infantry. And uh, in those starting sets, it was, it was hard to find all the pieces that went with each character. They're sometimes spread out over all the sprues. But here, nice tight little sprue that shows you the Endrin Master. I like how on this guy's breastplate, he's got the, the uh, symbol, that mask that I remember painting a hundred of those for my old fantasy dwarves. His mask also looks very reminiscent of the old fantasy style dwarven uh, masks that they used to wear. 
And then the Grunstock Gun Hauler. I've never painted a Warhammer Fantasy gyrocopter. And uh, this seems to be the evolution of that. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. It looks like a lot of fun. And then you've got three Endrin Riggers or three Sky Wardens. I think it's interesting. These guys have like harpoons. They've got the little dirigible suits on their backs. There's so many fiddly bits. I could really see myself just getting uh, a wealth of extra bits, but not really knowing what to do with them. So some of them look very specific, like they only go in certain areas, but I'm sure some of that creativity that you uh, converters out there would be able to utilize, I think could make a lot of great use from the, the bits in the Caradron Overlord frames. All right, Zinch now, the complete opposite in aesthetic where the dwarves are very straight and um, uh, geometric and everything looks very well put together and designed. This is like wild and crazy. Zinch, the Lord of Change, the, the God of Change and Mutation, everything just looks crazy like a, a painting, uh, just all different directions, some very free-flowing with the uh, whooshes of magic or the hair or the feathers, the tails here for the screamers. I have never collected these new screamers of Zinch before, the ones that look like manta rays, so I am really looking forward to building those up. And I believe this is the uh, Magister, yeah, on the, on the little whoosh of magic, so he doesn't come with a plastic base. I like how in this guy... You've got some sections there in the flying base as well as on the staff here. You look in the inside, there's a funky little mesh design. And it's just the amount of detail you can get in the plastics is just really cool. So I'm looking forward to painting that up. When you break open the pack here, it has some pamphlets, some uh, books. It has these uh, cards and... It's got the hidden agenda cards as well as the war scroll cards. And as a, a old school player who had to rely on flipping through the codexes, it's really cool to have these now. These war scroll cards have everything you need to really uh, know what each unit does, their strengths, their special rules. And I thought this was interesting here. You've got these two screamers and the uh, Zangor there, but these ones in the back, uh, They've got the artwork on one side, they've got a picture on the other side, and they're actually uh, like fold open pamphlets. Like there was too much information to put on just one single card, so you kind of fold yours open like that. It's got all of the stats and information on the inside. So very high quality and um, really cool. Like I don't play Warhammer Age of Sigmar, and uh, just seeing the amount of resources that went into these is really cool. And hidden agendas, this is something I learned was for like tournaments to get extra points for if you play in tournaments. There are just extra objectives that can give you some points to bump up your score. So I think that's pretty neat too, that you have a extra objective that um, is separate from whatever the main scenario is. Okay, so the Aether War book here has got so much fluff, so much information to read. And my daddy brain just cannot even begin to so uh but it must be very good you've got pages and pages of the different armies the disciples of zinch as well as the carriage ron overlords and um in the back so that's the first half the lore the fluff and then you've got the pictures the eye candy to give you some uh, hint as to what you could do with the colors see if as a painter i it's cool to see this, but I would have really loved some heavy metal style articles on how they painted the layers and the different steps like they used to do so much in the White Dwarves. Then you've got the scenarios here in the back. You could play the Aether War campaign if you're not just um, cannibalizing these boxes to get the units. And then more War Scrolls here in the back so that you can have that as a reference. So yeah, really cool. Then you've got your core rules, which is basically how to play the game if this is your first box, which it should not be. You should have the starter set. Don't, I hope you don't have this as your first box, but it does have a core rules there. And then uh, here is an overview of what your models will look like, all built and painted. And like I said, you get this, you get this uh, idea of what each sprue looks like. 
So if you want to build a model, you just look for that sprue, you look for that base, that size base, and then it really goes into detail for every unit on how to put them together step by step. Follow the steps, don't jump ahead and think you're being cheeky because some of these are meant to go in a certain order and uh, they could really mess you up if you do not follow them exactly. If you go too intuitive and stray off the beaten path. Then you've got the uh, different ways you can build the models, these multi-build kits. Man, I tell you guys, it's, uh, it's really cool how they're able to create completely different looking models just by changing some of the armaments and some of the little decorative bits. Then uh, there you've got that gun hauler. That's gonna be pretty cool. Uh, floating airship. And uh, yeah, that, that does look pretty interesting. Then you've got the Disciples of Zinch here in the back, the Magister on the flying disc, and then the two, uh, the melee, melee, <laughs> I used to call them melee, the melee and the ranged guys, the enlightened and the sky fires. And um, I, I think they look, they look so awesome. So I'm gonna really enjoy building them up. And then you've got a page right there for the screamers. Those seem simple to build in comparison. And it does take you through all of the paint sets or the paint uh, choices, the paint recommendations. There's no steps though. So again, showing us what paints they use, I guess is good to get a visual uh, idea, but you know, it's it just would have been cool to have a little bit of an extra step-by-step -step article. So that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what do you think as I went over the numbers, the savings of get, basically getting one of these two factions for free when you purchase uh, this box set is a very interesting, very interesting proposition. But what I really think you should do is wait until your friendly local game store puts one of these babies on sale, clearance rack style. Like, I mean, deep, deep, deep discount because then you're really getting the bang for your buck. You can walk away with your head held high. I remember when I picked this box up, I was astounded that it was on sale for 39 bucks at my local game store. It's, I could not believe it. So if you can find it on clearance, if you can get it on eBay for cheap, unopened, so you've got all of the boxes, uh, all of the models, all of the rules and everything in the box, then that's the way to do it. I'm really excited to see the savings that you can get because with everything the way it is, ha having the chance to save some money, paint some models, maybe even if you're interested in playing the aerial, you know, air combat focused campaign, then I think the value is there. It's just not something I would be looking for. This is not a game that I would go out of my way to find. But like I said, if you can get it for a discount, then uh, I think go for it. What do you guys think? Do you collect Zinch or Caradron Overlords, the Disciples of Zinch? Uh, what do you think of their play style? What do you think of painting them? And uh, I'm just interested to hear from you because if I decide to actually delve into either of these factions, make them uh, an army for Age of Sigmar, then uh, I'd love to hear from you guys in the community. You can let me know down below. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, hit the like button, leave me a comment before you go, and follow me on the Discord as well. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you are having a great day, a great box, like I said, and Games Workshop has released so many of these boxes with a uh, discount on two separate factions. This is just one that I happen to pick up. I know probably not many people are going to watch this that have actually bought it themselves. So I hope you got some value from it. Have a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching the video, everyone. If you'd like to join our Discord, we have such a great community over there. People posting up pictures of their works in progress, their finished projects, and just chatting about the hobby and life in general. It's a great place to be. So head on over there. Links in the description. If you'd like to support the studio, then check out the link to Igor's Trade House, where you can get merchandise at a 10% discount by entering the code HOBBYTON at checkout. And finally, I want to say thank you to my patrons, Daniel Sprinkle, Pix, Dicey Guy, Play It Painted, Seption, and David Moffitt. Thanks for supporting my studio, guys. If you'd like to join them, you can head over to the Patreon link and support me through there. Again, thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.